Hey, welcome back to Two Super Guys for Stocks. I'm Dylan. And I'm Vinny. And we're going to look at a New York Times article where Robert Schiller, who is a famous Nobel laureate economist, did the Schiller P ratio, is kind of agreeing with Michael Burry and Warren Buffett in a very specific area where me and Vinny are heavily invested. And we're looking at maybe any more. I am. <laughs> Two stupid guys treat stocks. All right. So, are you familiar with him? Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with him. He's uh, the Schiller PE, and then I know him from the Case Schiller Home Price Index as well. Yeah. Very famous economist. Yes. Very, very famous dude at Yale, which you be. Um, so, yeah, there's a New York Times article where he's saying, hey, we finally hit a record, but there's two metrics that we need to look at. You need to look at the spy. Um, with inflation into it, which I'm going to show that. That's actually really cool. It, it kind of shows that our gains are not actually gains, believe it or not. And he also recommended something very specific outside of America. So, all right. Can you see my mouse? Yeah. Yeah. All right. There's. right. I'm not going to read all this. Uh, this one's easy. But basically, he's saying... Because recent gains came after the long, periodically interrupted trend of rising stock prices, which have outstripped corporate earnings, it reminds him of the 1920s and the dot-com boom with both, uh, you know, they did not end great. And he is also saying, you know, there's a lot of doom and gloom people all the time, right? Um, Yeah. He's also saying, which multiple people have reiterated, that the gains over the next 10 years will not be near as big as the last 10 years, which, okay, that's fine. But this is the two things that were more crazy to me. So he said his research shows that at current valuation levels, the U.S. market is overpriced on a historical basis, given the level of corporate earnings, right? Okay. Now, AI plays into that, right? You have a company, NVIDIA, who is worth like two trillion? I don't know. They are now, but a little bit less than that right now. Um, and their sales is—it's not even close to that. He kind of related that how artificial intelligence reminds him of a popular stock called RCA, who went like crazy and then crashed in 1929. Yeah. Do you remember what RCA stands for? I don't. I have no idea. Like Radio Corporation of America. That's the show. Radio, like you know, the thing oh. that you put the knobs on. And that was made out of wood at the time. Like that, That's what they're talking about here. I guess there could have been a boom at some point from a technological standpoint. But uh, yeah, pretty crazy. They, they did survive. I should say that. And then the other red here, this is more important. He's saying that global markets outside of the United States have better valuations now and are more likely to excel. So if you guys have watched this channel, uh, Vinny has a decent amount of money in BABA. I have, I have a... I have a a little bit more. I have a lot of money in Baba. Um, well, for me, I have 380 yeah. shares. Um, he, the, we're also going to look at two other famous people here. But first, yeah. this is kind of interesting. So here's the spy. All right. Mm-hmm. So according to this, we are at all time highs. Right. We have surpassed this white line here, which was November 2021. However, when you put inflation into that and you adjust for it. We're actually not at all-time highs, which is kind of crazy, right? Because yeah. essentially, inflation has eroded our gains, and we're, we're, not, we're close to the 2021 November, but we're actually not there, even though the SPY is showing all-time highs. Here's another look at that. It's close. Mm-hmm. It's not quite there. Okay. Kind of crazy. Fair enough. Yeah. You know, it's interesting that this highlights a, a point for me where there, there is an index where it correlates the market PE to the next 10 years return. And we were certainly kind of in the, in the lower corner of that index. So you're looking at, you know, in the next 10 years, real returns of like 4%, I want to say, based upon the last time I looked at that PE ratio number. Um, yeah. That kind of supports what he's saying about. But, the, you know, that, that's just based upon historical analysis. And, you know, you, you cannot rely on that entirely for the for the future right if you were truly that good at predicting as an economist he would be a multi-billionaire and yes. not actually yeah. be you know working still at yale <laughs> yeah it's just like it's like all analysts everyone who's ever spoken out if they don't have a billion dollars they're wrong a lot because 
if he really saw it coming, which he actually mentioned this in the New York Times article, he's like, if I really wanted to 5X, 6X my money, I would have went into NVIDIA, but it seemed too risky. It's like, well, mm -hmm. okay. Well, I mean, if you would have known, I think we all would have went into NVIDIA, right? Yeah. Genius. Um, this is, I know that you recognize this. This is the 13F filing for uh, Michael Burry. All right. So his two biggest holdings, Baba and JD, outside the United mm -hmm. States. Yep. Boomsies. Very true. Very true. Um, Warren Buffett, he's decent. He's, a, he's an okay investor, right? He's not too bad. Um, okay. He has, since 2019, been grabbing up, it's like five bigger companies, but in increasing his stake, I think he's at like 10% now. I'll have to double check. But this is as of uh, January 16th, 2020, 2024. Um, he's been buying Japanese companies because the Japanese, I think it's called the Nikkei Index, has yeah. historically underperformed comparative Nikkei, to yeah. us. Like yeah, this. it had some really interesting economic times in Japan. It's worth work watching one like the Economics Explained videos about the Japanese economy. Uh, but they basically had negative interest rates for decades. Yeah, um, They have a lot of uniquely J Japanese struggles. Uh, but you're starting to see their economy actually turn around with the point where they've had enough growth now that they changed their interest rate uh, at the, kind of their, their Federal Reserve from negative to, to flat. So this that's the first time they've been able to increase their interest rates and like something I've seen like 20 years. So yeah. it, it, their market is really pivoting. Um, you know, with investing in Chinese stock, I mean, Ch Chinese, Japanese stocks, Buffett, he's very limited because I can't remember exactly that, but there's a lower cap for how much of the individual stocks he can own. Plus the overall market smaller. When you're Warren Buffett, you have to invest $140 billion. Yes. It's harder for him to find good places to park it. But from an individual standpoint, I've been putting more retirement funds now into like a VT where it's a total world stock market index. Don't get me wrong, it's still heavily weighted in US equities, but it also gives me exposure to Japan and China and India and you know European stock market as well. Uh, so you don't have to necessarily pick that and you're able to broadly diversify across all these companies. So that's something that is uh, you can consider for your own portfolio, you know, if you want to participate, but not necessarily predict which one is going to outperform. So, yeah. yeah, I know that Japan had some interesting issues, and I, I remember one of them being they just didn't have enough youth. The the mm -hmm. elderly to youth ratio was something that we're gonna hit uh, soon here. Actually, mm -hmm. it it did not go super well for them. Um, <laughs> let me see. There we go. And then Burry, of course, right? Yeah. This is the Hang Sang Index, uh, going all the way from early two thousands to now. I mean, we've done multiple videos on Baba. I have a little bit of JD, not a lot. It mm -hmm. it really seems like in terms of growth, it's them and India like yeah. that, that have it's the really two growth, biggest opportunities. Value, right? Because like the yeah. value there is insane. Where he's looking at all wild. these metrics since 1997, and you're this is basically one of the cheapest times to buy any Chinese equities in the since its inception. It's just crazy, like how, yeah. how good a deal you're getting right now. Um, Doesn't make any sense. Issues, See our cash flow uh, videos. Definitely a risk. It's China. But I, I did think it was interesting that Schiller now is also saying, yeah, Mary, it just the U.S. markets just look incredibly overpriced. So, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Very interesting ideas. But let us know what you think about it now in the comments below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Yep. Have a good one, guys.